everyone, this is Margarita Monet from Edge of Paradise, and you are listening to the interview Under Fire. To the light, to the fire, to the love, we go higher, to the end. All right, everyone, I'm going to welcome you all back to a new episode of Interview Under Fire. This is your host here, the one and only Sunny. Today, I have the honor of speaking with the exceptionally talented vocalist, pianist, artist, actress what else am i missing and creator of the realm i feel like i want to do like a game of thrones introduction like this is queen of the dragons uh margarita <laughs> monet thank you so much for joining our iof series today you know this is definitely a long time coming on finally getting the chance to host you on here i feel like we've been in touch for a few a few years at least you know it's exciting yeah. time now for you and the rest of the guys over at edge of paradise with the drop of your recent album, actually, The Unknown. Mm-hmm. It, it released about six months ago. feels like it was just yesterday. But yeah. since then, Margarita, I mean, the reception has been off the charts by countless other publications and fans all over the world, for that matter. First, congratulations. And there's so much to discover about Edge of Paradise's music and what you're all about. But before we get to all that, you know, we we kind of warmed it up pre-interview, but I feel like we're kind of back into normality again. If yeah. we can even call it that, like, how are you? And how has the beginning of 2022 been like for you? Let me remind you, it's 2022 and not 2020, but how are you? <laughs> How's life in Los Angeles for you lately? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for such a cool introduction. I really appreciate it. Um, it is it is hard to believe it's already 2022. I keep thinking it's 21. Um, but uh, yes, we recently released uh, The Unknown. And the time flies because we're just starting to get back into the swing of touring. We're preparing to start hitting the road um, mid to end summer. So that's really exciting for us because we love the stage. We love sharing the music live. We love to connect with people. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, And, you know, finally bring the live show to all corners of the world and uh, we're just really excited for that but you know other than that we're we're good we just um keep doing what we're doing we keep making music we recently actually yesterday we were at the studio doing drums for some new songs and a really crazy um cover (laughs) song so it's it's kind of under wraps but i think people are going to be quiet shocked maybe when they you can see me it. like stroking my chin, like all these surprises. <laughs> like it's nice to have surprises like that again, you know, good so, surprises. We're excited. We're excited. Lots going on. Yeah. You know, I, I want to start this up because I want to get in the music in- shortly, but I want to wind the clock back, Margarita, first to 2011, right? Maybe even before that, because for fans and listeners who may not know, you know, the story of how you and your bandmate Dave Bates met, because he's mm-hmm. also known as a co-founder. If you could just briefly talk about that defining moment in your life that led to the inception of Edge of Paradise with you, Dave, Justin, David, and Jamie into what it is today, because you guys have been on quite the journey. I mean, uh, over 10 years, how did you five like come together in the end and realize that this is what you wanted to do? Does it feel like everything also just went by in a blink at the same time, looking back? It really does. I mean... Yeah, Dave and I started this band 10 years ago, but really, I think this version of the band um, probably um, took shape in 2019 when we released Universe. But when, uh, you know, I met Dave really by chance. I was working with a, a producer. I was like, I was like a backup dancer to this girl group, not a backup dancer. We were five girls and we were all dancers, but we were like singing. <laughs> and I just moved here from New York. I'm going to so take was, a sip out of my Spice Girls mug just for yeah, reference. <laughs> I was just doing anything to, you know, survive in LA. And I was always a performer and I played piano my whole life. So the producer yeah. was, I wanted to make a song and uh, he wanted me to play piano on it and the song kind of turned into a rock song and we I had in the back of my mind that I wanted to have guitar in it but I knew really nothing about where to find a guitar player or you know even really how to have a rock band or anything like that so I was uh, working that day with a producer and we needed a cable and 
there was a music store downstairs and Dave, not downstairs, like in the neighborhood and down, yeah. Dave in a guitar clinic. And when we walked in, he was like shredding Guns N' Roses. And <laughs> we're like, wow, this guy's good. So playing, playing the magic notes, that that's what that is. Yeah. So, and that's how Dave and I met. And after that, you know, we decided to form our own thing because we come from such different backgrounds, but our visions and our drive really was similar in a way where we wanted to create something and take it all the way. We wanted to create something where we could really invest all our energy, time, everything into it. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to find people like that that are on the same page that have the similar work ethic and drive because it really takes a lot <laughs> to do this. Um, it takes a lot of sacrifice. So that's how Dave and I met. And uh, over the years, we had different band members and we were really lucky to have those band members because they all added something to the story of Edge of Paradise. And, you know, it kept evolving into, you know, what it became today, because I don't I, I don't think without the journey, without all the hardships, all the ups and downs, all the people that were involved, everything sort of brought us to where we are today so i'm grateful to that whole journey that we had even though you know sometimes you're like oh my god like it's so hard <laughs> you know yeah it's, it, it, a- it's really cool to see it, almost like a, another way to see how worlds kind of collide like different mm-hmm. worlds from from each of your experiences coming together yeah. to the end to do what you're doing and speaking of like a different world i, I want to focus on your world margarita because you moved around quite a few times throughout your life, right? And that's not an easy thing to do while staying on the path you've been on, you know, but you're doing it. You're, I believe you're, you're born in Armenia and mm-hmm. I know you lived in Russia, New York, Houston, which would make us neighbors because I'm here in Dallas, yeah. Texan <laughs> neighbors. So we're, so we're Texans. That's, I love that that we can call ourselves that. And now here in, you're in LA. Was there, I'm trying to think of a way I can ask this because was there ever a point in in that time frame, even before LA, before you where you are right now, that sort of gave you that uncertainty on where you'd end up, you know, because moving from place to place and finally you know what you want to do with your life. That's difficult. <laughs> yeah. I was always uh I never s- sat still. <laughs> even when I was really little. I mean, my mom, she gave me to she introduced me to the arts and like even when I was little we went to Prague to perform with some group I don't know I always loved seeing different places but I uh, yeah I never really knew where I and would end up I never really had a set place like I want to live there you know I always knew I wanted to see the world and um, I knew that when we moved to Houston and I grew up in Houston. It was my whole teenage years, my middle school, high school. So I, <laughs> I, I do kind of call myself a Texan. You are um, Texan. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Take it from a Texan. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, I knew that I wanted to sort of venture out from there because mm. I never wanted to stay in one place. And I went to New York for, you know, for college and I love New York. I still don't know what really made me move to Los Angeles uh, because I really loved the lifestyle in New York. But when I moved here, I think I was still, I was definitely still searching because I, like I grew up playing classical piano, but I knew I didn't really want to do that because it's sort of a more of a closed space. Like you don't really get to express yourself fully in classical mm-hmm. music. Um, even though you express yourself in other ways. But uh, I also did acting, but I knew I didn't want to be just that because you sort of really rely on other people for that. And I wanted to create my own Mm -hmm. thing. So when I moved to LA and when I met Dave and we formed the band, it was all very new to me, but I slowly start to realize that it's everything that I wanted to do because I got to make music, I got to play, um, I got to create, I got to perform, I get to make music videos, uh, I get to sort of build my own vision, which is really cool um, because I, you know, I don't have anyone else to, you know, if something goes wrong, I, it's sort of, I don't have anyone else to, not that I would blame, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm 
responsible for my own um, creations. Well, Dave and I and the rest of the group, but we do have sort of some, some control and vision that we can grow, if that makes sense. Shout out to Dave and for, for at least giving you this, I guess, sort of vessel kind of just expand on your your potential and you're reaching that potential. I want to add something to everything that you just told me, Margarita, because number one, LA and New York are two of my favorite cities. Uh, mm -hmm. I lived in both. Um, I did I did film out there in oh. LA. So I have experience in acting and directing. I also yeah. play the violin. So I have oh, experience in cool. classical music. So we had that we had that commonality and I started playing violin. I still have mine actually. It's like in the other mm -hmm. room. But not um as you're talking to me about this, I feel like I need to go back and open up my case and kind of just dust <laughs> off the old. It's been years since I played because I started playing, I think when I was Gosh, I was, I think I was eight, maybe, uh, wow. and, and, and I'm 33 now, but, but I started playing when I was in third grade and, and I've still had that. And, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I do see what you mean. We're metal heads for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <But> me. <laughs> <laughs> so as I, I understand where you're coming from and, and it's, it's really amazing. I hope that's, is that still a part of you? Like, did you still keep in touch with your theater arts roots, your Broadway roots? I know you've done ballet also. Like, oh, yeah. are, are those still like important aspects in your life that you still keep active? <laughs> I feel like that's a, like, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you answer that. <laughs> but it's funny because, yeah, when I was little, I wanted to also be a ballerina because, you know, I did ballet. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I do, you know, everything that I did in my life sort of creeps up <laughs> in the band one way or another. Mm -hmm. I use everything in some way. Maybe it's a different shape of it, but all the skills that I built over the years, I'm very grateful to have them because I sort of can lean back and use that. Um, but I do, I mean, I have a, my best friend is, uh, you know, in theater. Yeah, I still keep in touch with a lot of people and yeah. I do sort of keep an eye on what's happening in those worlds as well. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, I mean, I'm definitely all in this world now, but I didn't shut the door on anything in my past, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. A way to see it is also perhaps that everything shaped you into who you are today. Mm -hmm. Like it's a part yeah. of you, right? Yeah, like, exactly. Like you may not be a ballerina today, but it's it's something that you hold within a side. It has a special place in your heart is what I'm trying to convey. And I think it's great. I think it's, it really shows uh, the creativity that you were able to, that manifest from, you know, your past into what you have right now, you know, it feeds into your creativity, which you have yeah. today. So, and it's really great to see. I hope you still continue to do that. You, you never know. You never know. Like it, <laughs> during a show, you may just do one of the moves. Who knows? I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just spitballing here with that. But, and, and, and you talked about touring very briefly before we got into this topic. I'm going to kind of go back to that because you've been at this for quite a while, Margarita, you know, as far as like the touring life and the live music experience for you personally, you've toured with some of my favorite bands like Camelot. Shout out to Tommy, by the way, I had a chance to interview Tommy a while back. Uh, you, you, uh, uh, you went with Helmet, uh, Bullet Boys, Sonana, Arctica, you know, uh, Helion, you know, and I believe some members from Megadeth and Slayer, if I'm not mistaken, you've toured the US, Japan, Europe. Having said all that, would you say, Margarita, that you have a newfound appreciation of the touring life now, considering, you know, what's been happening the last two years? You know, I know I do for a fact. I really do. Before the pandemic happened, I was at a show every week. And then after everything got shut down, it's like, OK, I'm really grateful for everything I've experienced. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, our full probably our first big European tour was in 2019 with Sonata Arctica. And because we played, we didn't really tour with Camelot. We played some shows with them. Because okay. um, we, before we did a lot of our own touring, like we would headline, we would get bands uh, to play with us in certain areas before 2019 and yeah we played shows with those other bands but our full tour 
like that with other bigger, you know, bigger bands really started in 2019. And we had shows booked with uh, Hammerfall, um, Firewind, and just everything got canceled. So it was almost like we were climbing, climbing, and we were like here, we're ready to go to that big yeah. next level. And everything shut off. So we were really bummed because that was the year where Universe came out. It was our best received album. We had Frontiers. Uh, we had a lot of people behind us and everything stopped. <laughs> but uh, and the silver lining for us was recording The Unknown because we just went back into the studio and made an album. And that's my favorite album to date because I think that's our best work. So Me I'm too. also great. Thank you. That that happened to us because without those events, we wouldn't have had the unknown. So now that we're getting the taste of playing live again and, uh, uh, you know, hoping to go back on tour, really, really go back on tour now and just stay on the road for very long periods of time, I, I just can't wait because we've been building up for that for so many years. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, yeah, so it's I'm really excited for that. I'm excited for you. I, I I was wondering as you were telling me about you know the shutdown and everything that you guys were busy with. Did you ever get into that phase where I know I did? You would go back and look at like older videos of Edge of Paradise performing. <laughs> like, did you ever do that? Like when you had just time to yourself and it was and nothing was open for like 2020. You go to YouTube. It's like okay, let's search Edge of Paradise. To, like, <laughs> did you ever did you ever do something like that? It's like oh man. Look at that crowd. Like this, it's so different from what I remember. I don't know if you have time to do that. Look back on moments like that. I'm a sentimental person. So no, I totally get it. For me, <laughs> I, that it, it would it would be so crushing. So I think I avoided some of that because <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> focus on making music. But you know what I can say is when we just played this show recently, it was this bit of a strange feeling because it felt like these two years of nothingness never happened because it felt like it was just yesterday we were performing but there was that stretch of time that nothing was happening on the live front but then again it felt so crazy that we're back on stage so uh, I still kind of don't really know how to feel about it yeah we somehow we somehow aged two years right yeah. you know what I'm saying like everything yeah. just feels like this may be the most I always told myself that, that, you know, growing up 2016, for example, right. That was the fastest year of my life. Then 2017 was the fastest year of my life. And then, but nothing comes close to what we endured in the last yeah. two years. Like, yeah. like I wake up one day and here I am talking to you, you know, mm -hmm. if, if I someone would have told me, I would have finally had a chance to host someone like Margarita on my show post pandemic, or we're technically still in the pandemic, you know, two or three years ago, I would think, you know, you're crazy. That's no, that's not going to happen. Here we are. And we've learned so much. We grew so much. And I feel like you guys did too. And mm -hmm. I, I want to get into something else before we get into the music, because I'm a huge fan of the theatrics. Margarita, I feel like you're a sci-fi movie fan. Like I am of course. because, <laughs> because uh, watching movies like interstellar and alien and the fifth element, like those are my type of favorite sci-fi films. I'm, I, I can tell that you're like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you're, you're like nodding. Heck yeah. What else you got? Um, something that are, is really unique about you is that you're, you're an artist, a visual one at that and you paint and that's, and I've seen your work. I mean, holy hell, Margarita, that's, that's, that's some amazing stuff you have that on the side that I'm seeing that you're doing with not only yourself, but within the band how and and where did that inspiration to create something like that start because i feel like you're doing it not only for yourself but it's a part of edge of paradise's vision in in a way well thank you for the compliment and if but... you have any paintings like around you or anything like that please feel free to put them on display but no no uh if it's not too much trouble <laughs> yes <laughs> I usually send them out. I, you know, someone either buys them or, yeah, I actually don't have any of my paintings. It's crazy. <laughs> they, they end up all over the world, which is so cool to me. That's awesome. In someone's house, but um, if I think, well, my mom always painted. So growing up, I, I 
always loved what she was doing and I painted with her. Uh, but I, you know, when I went to college, I haven't done any art for a very long period of time. And then um, the artist, Timo Wars, he's in Germany and he did a lot of our album artworks and he's an amazing artist and really good friend. And one time, I don't know, I think he was here and he gave me his art book. And I don't know, something in me inspired me to draw something and I posted it online and someone liked it. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Like we wanna see more. And then someone wanted to buy it. And I was kind of uh, surprised a little bit because I was so focused on just the band, the music. And, and then I started to realize that, you know, I, I do, it, it's like a creative thing that we do. So art is, can be a part of it. And I always was a very visual person with a band with everything, with the music videos. So uh, and when I just started to paint, the music started to um, inspire some of this art. And I just sort of started to combine the two together and it evolved into whatever it is today. So- And I, uh, I wanna give a shout out to, um, what's his name? The, the person who, yeah. yeah. Um, and I also wanna let the fans know that they can actually go to Edge of Paradise's website and they can view your art there is that correct is there another yeah, yeah, yeah. is there another outlet that you like to plug in where people can view it or i, no, saw, the, I saw i saw it on the website i don't know if it was anywhere else that was being displayed yeah it's a paradiseband.com and then there's a tab called margaritas yeah. oh my gosh see that see that's amazing and uh i know i mentioned the just a few movies that i like can you mention just a I, it, this may be a hard question uh hard question to answer three like science fiction movies that you really love just name mm. at the top of your head what do you yeah <laughs> well I love the ones you named Interstellar I love Inception also one of my favorite movies of all time mm -hmm. is The Fountain and it's not your typical crazy science fiction movie but great it's film that is th great. I'm glad you mentioned it because that film does not get mentioned enough I believe that's also who directed that is it is it um Derek Yes, Aronofsky is a wizard with his. Yeah. I mean, if you've seen like Requiem for for a Dream and oh, Black, Black Swan, I uh, love that. So gosh, uh, I, I love but the. I, I feel like the message of the movie kind of gets over. Like people don't mm -hmm. see the message of the movies; they kind of just look at the visuals. Like, oh, it's a depressing movie. Yeah, sure, on the surface, but there's so mm -hmm. much more underneath oh, what's yeah. going on, you know. Um, and. Yeah. Uh, have you seen Mother? And <laughs> we're on Aronofsky. Oh no, I haven't seen Mother yet. Okay, I... Mother. Mother is a. That's a trip. Um, I mean, the <laughs> visuals are in, are insane for that for that movie. And uh, Javier Bardem and Jennifer Lawrence. I never thought they would ever come together for a movie like this, but they made it work. And that's it. Is a you're gonna have to you have to mental I have to mentally prepare myself to watch a movie like that. But I think that's the same thing with any Aronofsky movies. The Fountain. Oh, yeah. Good lord, Fountain. Uh, yeah. Man. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll let you mention it. I don't think I, I think I've only talked about that movie once with the best friend of mine, like 10 years ago. This is the second time I'm <laughs> talking about that movie, yeah. but. I also love the whole, because that movie, it's mm -hmm. like, takes you through time. And I love to, uh, just the idea of time really fascinates me and different timelines. And just, you know, if something can cross over, like, I always love to think about that. And some of the songs are about that. Um, like I, uh, I love to read all the theories like string theory and, or everything is happening at once. So one, you know, quantum certain... theory. Yes, I, I went into that too. It's man. I feel like we need to do like another separate episode where we just talk about that in general, we could talk yeah. about that for hours. Yeah. You're talking about the, the, uh, we're going to get to the music here. I promise. Mm -hmm. But with yeah. the, the time, uh, the time travel sort of movies. Have you seen, I mentioned this before with, I know my fans are like, okay, he's going to say it again. Tenet. Have you seen Tenet? Yes. Oh I've my seen Lord. So I, so I don't know what your, what are your thoughts on that movie? You know, Tenet was a little bit harder to follow. I feel uh -huh. like that you really have to, I love the idea of it. I think uh, it's hard to just take it in from the first time you see it. You have to really watch it a few times and uh, really because it's a, it's a really big movie. You know what I mean? It's a cerebral film and I love it when films 
make you go back and watch it again. It causes discourse. Yes. I like, for example, Edge of Paradise's music. I have to go back and hear it again because I may have missed something the first time around. Yep. You know, it's, that's the same thing with. Uh, again, we're we're like film buffs and sci-fi buffs. I like how we're meshing minds here. But I, I watched the first time. I was like, "What is this?" You know, yep. like with Tenet, and I went back and I was like, "Okay, I got it. subtitles." subtitles 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 like you yeah. have to keep that on and that i love it that a film makes you do that it makes you want to go back and watch it again but it's one of my it may be my favorite it's up there with interstellar that one or <laughs> tenet with christopher nolan's film but anyway right. anyways i'm glad you saw that so is there is there one that you love like your specific like time travel movie that you just love is it the fountain or was there is there another one that we haven't talked about yet of cloud atlas i don't know if you've seen that yeah one. That's like a, yeah, that's Tom Hanks, I believe, right? Tom Hanks, Hill Berry is in it. Mm -hmm. um, Gattaca is a great film. Um, I've seen that too. Gattaca. Yeah. Uh, it's Saturday night. I'm going to have to like make this, like compile this movie list. Then uh, I, today, tonight I'm free. So <laughs> I yeah. may end up doing that. I'm, I do have the fountain. I have a bunch of movies on the other corner of my room, but mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll. Oh, you know, I watch. I what is it? Uh, I Origins. That's a great movie too. I don't know if you've seen it. Is it's that, not. I have to look that up. It's not a really a big popular movie. Mm -hmm. I Origins. It's about. It's kind of plays upon the reincarnation, but it does its own spin on it, and it's sci-fi, and it's so interesting, and just really makes you feel and think. And I love movies like that. Just I Origins. I see it, 2014. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's uh, it's by Searchlight. So, oh, Britt Marling's in it. You know who Britt yeah. Marling is? Have you seen? So, so again, oh man, we're we're gonna be talking about this the entire interview. I think <laughs> Britt Marling starred in um, uh, that show called. Help me out here. It's on. It's on Netflix. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I I don't I forgot uh, what it is. It's it's oh, a the, crazy. The, uh, the OA. Yes. Yeah, that got canceled, unfortunately. But that's a that was a that was a that was a mind bender. I don't know if you've seen that show. It yet. Was, yes, I have. It was a very. She also did that movie, Another Earth, which is a great yes, one. Yes, another great film. Man, shout out to all these. Shout out to Britt Marling. Shout out to uh, Christopher Nolan for inspiring us, so to believe. You know, yeah. like we. I, I'm. I watched those movies today. So um, we're gonna have to do another interview where we just yeah. talk about movies. Maybe we'll save it for the Wings interview. But let's yeah. get to the music margarita because the unknown i feel like i feel like that album still needs to be talked about it's it hasn't really been like it's only been what six months it doesn't feel like six months it dropped september 17th last year on frontiers music again i know yeah. we've done a lot of shout outs shout out to frontiers and i want to repeat that here you know the fourth album of edge of paradise as we get into the core of this record and beyond this is the follow-up to 2019's universe like you mentioned which that was just a tremendous effort through and through, you know, up to that point, you guys have been receiving worldwide positive acknowledgements from outlets like Billboard, I believe, Revolver, Brave Words. You're also featured as uh, Metalholic's top 25 oh. women in hard rock and metal. Margarita, pressure. Do you feel <laughs> anything like that when you hear those numbers you know when you decide to sit down and write music does that ever register in your head or is it just like you know what it's fine they're gonna say what they're gonna say i'm still gonna do what i'm gonna do do you ever feel pressure is that a thing that resonates with you i i do feel pressure because with every it's not about what people say it's more about i sort of know where like universe at the time that was our best work so i always feel pressure that we have to make music greater to us that we feel is greater than what we created like the unknown i feel like we really stepped it up from universe just overall and you know everything music is of course subjective so some people may love some songs from universe better than unknown or vice versa or people have their own favorite songs but overall to us i feel like we really stepped it up for this new album it's just a bigger grander album so i do feel pressure that with the next one we have to even do it <laughs> step up <laughs> then we actually we just did another original song um it's called the faceless and i really feel like oh it, man uh, really brought it up <laughs> so. and and what's really cool about 
your music and, and i feel like we can dive into that a little bit further too because the music videos that kind of arrange with the songs they every song is like a, a story right and it's represents itself within the music video music from another world i hear that a lot when i think about edge of paradise's music you know the i know the goal for edge of paradise was to create something unique something that will stand the test of time like i know it's you guys when i hear it when i hear your voice when i hear you know the riffs from 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 dave like his his crazy riffs that he writes i don't know how he does it but you know songs like digital paradise right the title track to you touch you die to leaving earth which is i think that's my favorite from that record uh a couple a, a few words i just want to throw out at you majestic uh cinematic atmospheric ethereal i mean the song arrangements went back and forth between these i mentioned the guitar melodies and, and the keyboard melodies those booming bass and the thundering drums there was that you know the industrial and the symphonic and the traditional heavy metal power metal and even hard rock roots from the songs and don't get me started on your vocals because your range i mean there's a reason why i mentioned why that you are one of the top 25 right you know that you want up yourself here margarita in a way i felt like the unknown i want to piggyback off what you just said I felt like the unknown can be seen as an album that also pushed each of you to become better musicians today. Like before you started tracking on the un unknown, you know, I feel like you were different people. Would you agree to that? Yes. Um, yes. With every album. I mean, I think it's just like with everyone, you get older, you evolve, you learn from your experiences. I'm a, such a different singer from what I was and, even from, you know, making each album, you really grow as an artist because it's just that experience. And uh, I, uh, my approach to singing has always been to do what the song needs, no matter if I can or like, there's no, I cannot, <laughs> I figure out how. <laughs> so um, I feel like that mindset helped me to, um, become a better singer because I try not to set the limitations and you know same thing with Dave I think we just um, we also just focus on the song we try not to focus on our own individual and if, even though like we for example Dave he is such a great player he can play anything but in some songs some of the stuff is really simple but it really takes um, a lot of thought to create that simplicity because that's what works for the song. And as long as you really put a lot of heart into it, then it works. Like it doesn't have to be a crazy intricate part for the song, you know, to make it powerful. So we had to learn that um, because like before, you know, when I met Dave, he had a guitar album and uh, that's, sort of became our first album, Mask. Um, and, you know, right now, like we sound like a completely different band because I feel like that side of, that music was more focused on individuality, individual mm -hmm. part, and it didn't really work together where now we're more mature. We really know how to make everything work together into something that's powerful. And that's what we strive to do now is just to create songs. It's not, not about us. Nothing is about us. It's just all about the songs. And bands are always trying to evolve. Right. And I know with Edge mm -hmm. of Paradise, I feel like each album seemed as if we're, I, I think with Edge of Paradise, I feel like we were seeing the next thing, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I wonder about that because can this album Margarita, I don't know if you can even answer this. Can it serve as a sneak peek? I don't know, into what's to come on newer material or are we barely scratching the surface here? I wonder how much do you leave out? It's like, you know, you had the song arrangements, right? You pick out the songs, like how much of it was left out? It's like, oh, you know what? We could do something on the next album. Let's save that. Mm -hmm. You know, does that ever come into the decision making? You know? a, little, a little bit, because, you know, some bands, they write a bunch of songs and then they pick what's going to be on the album. But we're never one of those bands. We're always, we start an idea. If we like the idea, we make it into a song. And uh, our songs take a really long time to create just because there's so many layers. So much goes into them. So it, it really takes a, quite a bit to finish each song. But 
like the unknown has a lot of hints into what the next album will be. I knew because, it. <laughs> yeah. But the universe, you know, the new song has a lot of the unknown in it, the, lyrically, um, like the song False Idols and the title yeah. track. The new song, it t- touches upon that because now, you know, we are in this new world. We, we are going to be in the unknown and we're going to build a new world in yeah. that unknown. we can reinvent it or invent it and, you know, create whatever world we'd like. So <laughs> we're going to be in the unknown. So we, and, we, and, uh, and a big that. part and a big part about that. Sorry, I don't mean, I don't mean to cut you off. I, I was going to, I was going to add because, mm-hmm. you know, I want to get into uh, further into the, the message of this band, because I felt like the sound was also a big part of this record that I don't feel like it gets mentioned enough. I'm an audiophile these days, Margarita. Oh. I'm very picky <laughs> on how I want my music to sound, yeah. but Howard Benson, Mike Plotnikoff, Neil Sanderson. I mean, they they're known for their work with Hailstorm and, you know, three days grace, you know, bands like that. And they were part of the producing and mixing and mastering of mm-hmm. this record. I'm sure there was that, sense of comfortability in the studio for you knowing that you had this team working on your music right because Mm -hmm. it's important to get it's one thing to make the music but it's important to get the way you want your music to sound out to the audience yeah definitely well Howard Benson so Mike Plotnikov we've worked with him for so long and we're Mm -hmm. I'm just so comfortable with him because he really understands our vision and we're just there to bring it to life and Howard Benson um, really took my vocals to another level. He saw something, he saw an, another edge to my voice and brought it out. And I didn't really have that before. And Neil, he really brought that because Three Days Grace is so different from us, but he really taught us to narrow in on the message and to take out all the extra stuff that doesn't need to be there so the main message really comes across to make it more powerful and then we had Jacob Hansen out in Denmark and Jacob really he mixed our record and I don't know I thought I was forgetting a name I I, I don't know how I forgot Jacob Hansen of all people I'm so sorry Jacob (laughs) but I don't know how he does because we send him so many files and he I love that wide, huge sound, and he really achieves that. And uh, yeah, brings the song to life. So, uh, really, without a team of people, without you, you know, without without the team of people, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was harder to do because it would be impossible. Because it takes it it takes all those people to really bring the idea to life. And so. between writing and structuring the songs and the production process, mm-hmm. like you just talked about. You know, this is something that I was really excited to get into. We talked about movies, right? The lyricism throughout this album and maybe even Edge of Paradise's discography, Digital Paradise, for example, I'm just going to pick a song. Uh, that's set in a world where the line between reality and digital space disappears, right? Um, like, like, I feel like the lines <laughs> between reality and science fiction get more and more blurry, blurry, you know? And there was also a message, another message in there kind of, empowering people to find strength in the unknown which Mm -hmm. at a time like today i feel like that's that's really it's relevant and i begin to think about the tangibles of a theme or a message to your music margarita like one or multiple like how important are themes to you is that a big component i I imagine it's a big component to songwriting for a band like edge of paradise right because i mentioned the stories that are kind of mini stories that are being told within the songs each song stands out, the music videos for each song's themes, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I love, you know, lyrics for me are very important because that's the story that I want to tell, that I want to create. And uh, for me, the music, you know, I, I sometimes have an idea what I want to talk about and then it inspires where the music starts and then the music inspires the words. So for me, it's all one thing. And I put a lot of, heart and soul and thought into it so I'm glad you mentioned it and um yeah (laughs) I don't know (laughs) I did I'm so sorry I got so excited I hit the mute button on accident I've never done that ever I've done maybe like 400 500 interviews this is the first time I ever made myself because I'm so so excited 
I was going to, I was going to say like, we got into like the inception mind mode when it comes to mm-hmm. talking about themes and songwriting. It's an important thing. You know, I feel like it's, it's one thing to hear the music, but the way the message is delivered, the way you sing, the way you lyricize, if that's a word, you know, the representation of the lyrics to get the message out there. There's a reason why you sing it the way you do and Mm -hmm. the visuals come into play. And I feel like that doesn't really give, it doesn't get a lot of credit because there's a lot of hard work that gets put into that. And I felt that, you know, and I feel like, you know, the message out there, empowering people to find strength in the unknown. (laughs) We are technically in the unknown. I didn't know what it was going to be like two years ago. You didn't know what it was going to be like two years ago. Here we are. You're back on the (laughs) stage doing what you're doing. And I'm doing what I'm doing, talking to amazing people like you on my publication. But, you know, I feel like it it really is an extension of Edge of Paradise's music, the themes. And I feel like it's going to be even grander the next time around. You mentioned the new songs you guys are working on. So, (laughs) um, but it, it really is interesting to see this almost like as a snapshot of where you are in a certain time in your life, looking back with these albums. Do you feel that way too? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like that just about life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes like you, I watch my life from behind glass. Sometimes like, yeah, I'm still thinking about when I muted myself. I can't believe I did that. That was so funny. <laughs> You know, Margarita, we've covered a good amount of ground on this awesome interview. You know, we're going to get to that surprise at the end here in a second. But I I, want to thank you so much for just, you know, sharing so much about who you are and what Edge of Paradise is all about. This podcast will be on all streams around the world. And I want people to get the chance to know you guys, to hear you guys, what you guys are all about. From the different experiences and perspectives in your timeline you have taken in, which we have discussed about you know, your upbringings, your influences, performing for as long as you have, and the people you have met and worked with doing these records. I mentioned it before. I am excited to see where you guys go from here. This is definitely something you have a passion for. And from the truth, the truth is, from what I'm saying, you guys have experienced plenty already in your career. And then some have your aspirations as a musician, as an artist, or or hell, as a human being, Have they changed or evolved since when you first started performing in the industry? Like you see things differently today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think part of it is I, you know, when I was younger, not, you know, it's funny to say when I was younger, but I've been doing that (laughs) for a while. Um, The fountain I'm thinking now. (laughs) But I, I really now I'm more comfortable just like I really know who I am now. I really know the music I want to do, the music we're doing. I really I feel like I found myself maybe before I was still searching. I you know, I really know what I want to present to the world, what I want to say. And I'm comfortable in that because I'm really excited and I love it. And I love to share it with people and I'm just um yeah I'm super happy with the the world we're building so it it took a few years yeah it took a long time to really get to this point where and I think it's important because it really took that long journey to get Mm -hmm. to where I today um took a lot of ups and downs and a lot of exploration uh but I think it's important. That's why I think it's important to focus on the journey and not the end goal. (laughs) They always tell you that it's an easy thing to do, but it is very important. And I think also just as important as celebrating the, no matter how big or small, the successes along the way too. Cause I I feel like I haven't done that enough. And the last two years has really allowed me, at least myself to do that as well. So um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll feel the same way, but I feel like that's an important question to ask too, you know, because it's easy to lose track of ourselves as the success, more successful we are. I like to kind of push things back and kind of look at it from the outside, kind of reevaluate about why I'm doing this and then go back in, refocus. Yeah, important. I'm bad at that because the further we oh, get, it's, yeah, it's, it's like you never really notice of what you achieved hmm. and you never feel like it's enough. And then you always look to the next thing. So yeah I'm, I'm bad at that because i'm always looking like what's next what's next what's next so i do really agree with you it's important to look back 
and appreciate because it's your life and you created mm-hmm. that. Appreciate yourself and what you've done and how you interacted with people and all the relationships you've built. And like, I'm so grateful for all the relationships we've built with people throughout the world. And I do acknowledge that because it's just really amazing that music brought us together with so many people that otherwise we would have never even known. So I think that's really cool about this music, like even talking to you, mm-hmm. um, you know, music brought us together and you're super interesting and super cool. So <laughs> I, right I, back really- at you. I, I can't believe it took us this long to finally like uh, do something like this. You know, we've had so many amazing bands like yourselves, there, but not you guys. Now we got a chance to this. This is definitely going to be the first of many. Trust me. And we will do the wings interview sometime in the future with you and the guys. That's going <laughs> to that. You're going to remember that for a while now. All right, let's get to we're approaching the last part of the interview, unfortunately, but this is the fun part. You ready? You look nervous. Mm-hmm. You like adjusting yourself on the table. Here we go. <laughs> what I'm going to do here, you mentioned the themes. You mentioned the songwriting. I think I'm giving you a clue. I'm going to do something here called The Hot Seat. Hot seat. I'm going to see if you know the lyrics to your own songs. Are you up for that challenge? <laughs> of, course. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. All right. <laughs> Yeah, here's what we're going to do. I handpicked a select few songs. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go down the list, all right? I'm going to start you off easy, I promise. I'm going to read a lyric. You're going to have to guess the title of the song. And that's where, <laughs> when we did the Chicken Wings interview, that's how it would start. You would actually do this with your bandmates, and we would ask you, and if whoever gets it wrong, they would go next to sauce, next hot sauce <laughs> level higher. But we'll do that next time, all right? So luckily, you don't have the hot sauce, but you got the challenger, all right? I would lose because nobody knows my life. <laughs> okay, so then you're fine then. If you do it against them, you're fine. But let's see. I'm gonna. I uh, I handpicked a few. I hope I I hope I can get you at one of these. So we're yeah. gonna see how how good you are. All right, you ready? Here yes. we go. All right, all right. Here here we go. You humans have a sickness. A you fix. Touch. Oh, see, yeah. You touch, you die. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I told you I started off easy. Yeah, from the <laughs> unknown. Tw- uh, last year. All right, moving on. Am I strong? What's my flaw? Do I matter here at all? Where can I find the strength to bring good to face my fate? That's a great lyric. Oh, oh that's from Universe. I mean, that's, that's from uh, old. Uh, uh, that's from, that's <laughs> from, what's the name of the song? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, stars? Uh, think again. Th- okay, think, think, think 2017. Oh my God! No, you did not, Mister. <laughs> From the Alive EP. Oh yeah, I got you there. All right. I'm thinking so, you. you got right. me. I'm you. Okay, and okay. I'm, and I'm not gonna go in order too. All right. So I'm hoping the some of these are deep cuts. What did you say before, uh, Mystery? What uh, song you thought it was? Cars. For some reason, because I thought you were gonna do the albums. Okay. All right. Now I'm. All right. Ready. All right. Well, obviously, well, you kind of answered the next one. The girl she had dreams broken by her doubts. <laughs> and now she feels trapped. So stars. that one that stars. Yeah, that was the next one. I was like, how does she know? That's from Universe 2019. Yeah. So it's gonna be a song. So Okay. Alright, here we go. Okay, this may you may you may get this one. No, you should get this one. Alright. This tainted voice infects my thoughts. Addictive greed, leave me alone. We're lost in our own worlds removing this machine part of our grand design watch out i feel like i got confused here <laughs> wait is that dust to dust Mm-mm. this is this is i'll give you the year 2015 oh my god <laughs> 2015 yeah um it's a song off of the album my... no wait. it's a it's a song off the album that came out that year oh it's for my model waltz yep you got the album right. You got to get the song now. You gonna try, you gonna read again? <laughs> you yeah. know what's you know what's amazing about this? It's in a way I'm making you rethink your uh, set list when you go on stage. Yeah. So you're gonna have to <laughs> you're gonna have to go back. It's like how do I not know the lyrics to my own songs? It happens. You, you, you got it. Perfect. Yeah. Wait. Say it again. I'm all right. All right. Again. This tainted voice infects my thoughts. Addictive greed. Leave me alone. It's like poetry when you're reading it to somebody. We're lost in our own worlds, 
removing this machine. You should release like an audio book where you're just reading it like that. Like this. Isn't breakaway? Yep. Breakaway. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, wow. I, I don't know if I should give you a point for that. All right. Here we go. Moving on. Okay. This is this is great. Okay, this this should this should be easy. Okay. There should I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't know. And I'm in the race. Won't let the madness bring me down. And I'm in the race. I don't wait. Yeah. I <laughs> want your madness. Won't let your madness tear me down. The unknown, 2021. Okay. This next one is. Uh, I'm not gonna say anymore. I'm giving it too much away. All right. <laughs> On the dry and dusty road, the nights we spent apart alone. <laughs> I need to get I'm back right. home. Yeah. <laughs> Love rain over me. That's the Who cover. Great cover. If anyone who has not heard that song. I'm thinking like I would never write those words. <laughs> That's exactly why I picked that. It's like okay, let's, yeah, you got it though. You sung those. Uh, it's uh, actually one of your most recent covers, I believe, that just dropped. Great song. Your your the I reach, your the reach within your the vocal pitch in that song. Um, man, I don't know how you do it. I don't care how you do it. Just keep doing it because it's amazing. All right, we got a couple more. <laughs> You're like, oh my god, we got a couple more. Thank God. Taste of your weakness. They feast on the blood of trust. Faceless men in fancy suits will suck your spirit. Huh. Right. Hollow from Universe 2019. You see what I'm saying though? When you when you just read it, it's like poetry as opposed to singing it on stage. Yeah. You no, know? it's very interesting when you just hear it. All right. You don't. This is the last one. <laughs> you don't have to face it when you embrace it. It's a perfect lie. Open your senses, drop your senses, leave yourself and fall. Oh, great. That, I love that last. Uh, perfect Shade of Black. Yep. I think that's the first song up, off that, of Immortal Waltz. That was such a long time ago. My God. <laughs> Have you performed that live recently? No, you know, we <laughs> not. The only songs we do hmm. are from Universe and the Unknown recently. And the only other song is In a Dream, because In a Dream was the first song Dave and I wrote together. And we wow. played it. We, we've always played that song. But now, kind of, The Unknown kind of replaced that one in our set list. <laughs> hey, I know I'm just one of uh, thousands of fans out there, but when you get to Dallas, <laughs> just saying, just saying. Um, That's so cool. You kind of brought me full circle. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're talking about Time Machine, right? We've been talking about the Time Machine within the movies. We got our own Time Machine here. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. I got you on the mystery alive EP. That, yeah. <laughs> that kind of came out of nowhere. But so, uh, Margarita, this is this is it for us. But uh, I mean, I would love to stay in touch with you. We would yes. definitely do this again. You know, it, this is definitely worth the wait. I will say that. But <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I gotta ask: Do you have any like last words? Is any shout outs? Anything you like to plug in or mention? As far as Edge of Paradise and the new album before we finish things off here i don't know if you have a new music video coming out touring whatever you can I yeah. can't it's a secret that's fine but go ahead. <laughs> well, i just wanted to say thank you to you and to all your listeners and to all our fans and supporters and friends and we are yeah we're, we're going to be starting to announce touring uh very soon this month so uh we do have a lot coming i don't know if i can exactly say <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> because we like to announce things when everything is really set in stone learning from the pandemic we announced so many tours that never happened now right, we're like that's true set in stone to really say something but knock on I just, all the woods i got wood right here so i'm knocking on all the woods yeah. so but on, yeah but yeah yeah it's it's that's fine and i i feel the same way it's like oh do i i mean everything mm -hmm. that happened in the pandemic it was nice like the first couple of months i was able to catch yeah. up on all the stuff stuff that i didn't do and then yeah. after like after like Ju june and july hit and it's like okay i gotta find a way to stay busy like yeah. i remember i learned like baking i learned how to bake cookies uh -huh. like i've never baked anything in my entire life before that and finally uh -huh. i that's something i learned so anyway okay. <laughs> so so uh but uh, everyone is listening this is margarita monet from edge of paradise and do us a favor pick up the unknown it's out right now worldwide on Frontiers Music and keep on the lookout for new stuff coming out from these amazing people. Uh, you can listen to this podcast on all major podcast streams out there. Check us out on interviewonafire.com. Uh, Margarita, we'll stay in touch. 
I will mm-hmm. keep you posted when our episode airs. It's going to be a thing of beauty for all our fans and listeners to hear, and especially your fans. I'm sure they'll get a kick out of this interview. This is definitely yeah. one of my one of the fun yeah. ones I've done. Um, they're all fun, but um, that would be it. So, so you'll be on the road soon. Can't wait to mm-hmm. see you here in Dallas. Come again soon. All right. So, uh, keep let me know if you like me to book, help me book a show here. We'd love to see you guys here in Dallas. All right. So, I'm gonna Thanks. let you go here. Have a great weekend. I am going to yeah. check out some of those movies you listed to me tonight yeah. <laughs> that I have not seen yet. Uh, and we will talk next time. Okay. Thank you. So nice talking to you. All right. You too, yeah. Margaret. Great to finally meet you after all these years. You know, we've been, we've been staying in touch, but we'll do this again here in the near future. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Stay well. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. To the light. To the fire. To the Hey guys, thanks for listening to Interview Under Fire podcast. If you guys liked what you heard, please subscribe and share our channel. And please leave a five-star review as that helps us tremendously. If you'd like to check out more, visit www.interviewunderfire.com or our social media channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And finally, we want to thank you all for the support you've been giving us. Keep it burning.